Let us have a word of prayer as we begin. Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you, dear God, for this time now that we can study your word. And Lord, as we open your word, Father, we ask that you would open our eyes, that you would open our hearts, our ears, our mind, dear God, so that we would behold wondrous things out of it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The God of now. I've been going to this church for about eight and a half years, believe it or not. Eight and a half years already, and so much has changed. Uh, we've been through a few pastors. We've seen so many of our friends come and go. So many of our beloved loved ones have also gone to sleep in Jesus. And yet so many new babies have been added to our congregation, amen. Our church grows every year, even if we don't even have an evangelistic series, because it just our babies are coming. Isn't that right? I contributed to already. I remember the powerful revivals that took place right here in this church. I remember having at least two evangelistic seminars every year. We even sent our youth to GYC. Amen? This church, we did that. Tammy, myself, we went out, and a few of you in here, we went. This little church in Ganya Heights sent its youth over to GYC, and that was Texas. Texas, yeah, big mainland. Oh, the good old days, isn't that right? The good old days. You know, when I first came into this church, I was 40 pounds lighter, and I was single, and now married. I got so, it feels like I have so much kids. And it feels like it's so hard now. Life was so simple back then, and now, boy, has time changed, right? It's funny. But you know what, brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter uh, what stage of your life that you're in today, I'm sure, or whatever circumstances you're going through, whatever it is that you're going through right now today, I'm sure that if you're really honest with yourself, that you would be able to look back a few years of your life, a few months, a few weeks, and you would, without a doubt, you would admit that God was there with you. Isn't that right? You would admit that God was there with you. For me, I, yeah, I got 40 pounds heavier, but God was with me. God has blessed me in many, many thousands and trillions of thousands of ways that I can't even count. I don't think there's anyone in this church today who could say God wasn't with them. And I would take a wild guess that if I were to ask you, if God is in control of your future, you'd all say amen. Isn't that right? If I asked you who's in charge of your future, is God in charge of your future, is God in control, you'd say amen, brother, of course he is. Isn't that right? But this morning I'm here to remind you of something more present. I'm here to remind you that God is not only the God of your past, he's not only the God of your future, but he is the God of now. Amen? He is the God of now, right, that, 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 right here, right now. That's right. God is active. He's alive. He's able to do wonderful things for you now. Amen? Not just in the past. Now as in the present. This is great news, isn't it? Amen? Is it okay to motivate the saints of God this morning a little bit? Sometimes we hear the sermons and it's like, boom, 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 beat you down. And, and sometimes we need to, to motivate. We need to be encouraged. The saints of God, we, we go through a lot of things in life. And every now and then it's okay to be motivated, to be encouraged by the word of God. Amen? Let's go to the book of Mark chapter 10. You're there already because I had prepared you for it. Mark chapter 10. And we're going to read in verse 46. The beautiful sound of pages turning. Verse 46, and we're going to read all the way to 52. It's a familiar story. The Bible says, And they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. 
And, what's the next word after that? Immediately. And immediately, immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. This happened just a few days before the cross. Jesus and his disciples were traveling back to Jerusalem and they passed through the city of Jericho. And this is the time of the year where multitudes of people were traveling uh, to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. It was the holidays. Even here on Guam during the holidays, traffic is crazy. Isn't that right? This, this is the main thoroughfare. It's the holidays. Tons of people all around Jesus. If you could imagine the intensity of the crowd, everyone is busy and engaged in their journey. And in the midst of this busyness and noise and activity, there was a man who was having a very tough time in his life. He was lonely, rejected, and worst of all, he was blind. His name is Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. He was sitting by the roadside begging for anyone to help him. Now here on Guam, you can drive a few traffic lights and someone would be there begging, isn't that right? But then, you know, you, myself, speaking for myself, I'm weak and I'm human. And I have given many times to some of these brothers out there and sisters who are asking for help. And I will also admit that I have seen them out there on the side of the road drinking a beer and smoking a cigarette. And it's like, wait a minute, how much help do they really need? I'm not sure, but God is in control. We still give anyway, isn't that right? We still give anyway. Bartimaeus was not that type of beggar. He was literally blind. He was really alone. He really didn't have anything. He was disabled, he couldn't see. And in those days, brothers and sisters, that's as low as it gets. That is as low as it gets. In verse 47, the Bible says, And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried, The more great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. So he may have been blind, but he wasn't deaf. He wasn't deaf. All he could do was hear, and as this multitude of people are passing by, he can hear all the chatter, he can hear all the footsteps, hear all the busyness. And he must have asked someone around him, hey, what's going on? And somebody must have told him, and somehow he figured out that it was Jesus of Nazareth that was about to pass by. You know, he's heard about Jesus, but he's never met him. Let me share with you an interesting passage. I'm sorry, E.G. White does tell us that Bartimaeus was waiting a long time to meet Christ. You know, he probably heard of Jesus from all the people passing by over the last three and a half years. He heard about how he healed people. He must have heard about how the impossible was made possible, how he raised the dead, walked on water, multiplied the food. And this powerful Jesus is about to pass him by. Amen? And so with this eagerness of intense desire, he cries out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You know, it's amazing what he did when he found out who was so close to him. He began to shout. He couldn't let this opportunity pass him by. He needed to be sure that, that Jesus could hear him. And so he calls Jesus, son of David. Somehow, this title, by the way, somehow Jesus... Uh, Bartimaeus believed that Jesus was in fact the promised Messiah that the Jews had been waiting for. He never seen Jesus do any miracles. How could he be so confident? And it's interesting, the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17 tells us that faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. I remember when I first heard the word of God, it was, it was amazing. I was 40 pounds lighter, yes, but it was powerful. I mean, this word has this transforming power to change lives, amen? And I didn't know a whole lot back then, and I'm not saying I know, I'm just a kid. I don't know anything nowadays, too. But I knew less than I do now, and when I heard that word, and when I found out that the Sabbath is truly indeed the Lord's day, and I looked at myself, and I looked in the mirror, and I was wondering, why do I go to church again on this particular day that's not the Sabbath? And I saw everything from the Word of God. This power started to flow through my veins, this desire to do what is right, to get closer to God and to keep the true Sabbath day. This is my experience when I first heard the Word. And believe it or not, I was worshiping God, keeping the Sabbath in my bedroom 
by myself. I didn't know you guys were here. And I worshiped God in my bedroom. I kept the Sabbath. And my sister and my brother-in-law would always wonder, man, this guy's weird. He's in his room all day from Friday night to Saturday. And all we hear is sermons. That was me. When I heard the word, it just really grabbed at me. And so Bartimaeus is here. He somehow hears that Jesus is, is coming by. Sons and daughters of God, 127. Throngs of people who possess their sight are passing to and fro. But they have no desire to see Jesus. One look of faith would touch his heart of love and bring them to the blessings of his grace. But they know not the sickness and poverty of their souls. And they feel no need of Christ. Not so with the poor blind man. His only hope is in Jesus. How many of you want deliverance in your life right now? Don't answer. Don't raise up your hand. God knows. All right? I don't know what you're going through. But if you want deliverance, we need to believe that Jesus is God, and we need to cry out to him, amen? We need to reach out to him because he could deliver us, and he could do it right now, believe it or not. So when Bartimaeus finds out that it's Jesus, the Messiah, passing by, he begins to cry out, and, and he must have been shouting at the top of his lungs. He probably was using all the energy that he could muster up to get the attention of Jesus. People rebuked him. They mocked him and told him, hey, be quiet. You ever done that? Sometimes, right? Someone's trying to praise God. Someone's trying to call out to God. And sometimes you're that person who says, hey, be quiet. It may not be so direct, but sometimes through your words, through your actions, you're trying to hold someone back from reaching out to God. Bartimaeus was a man of perseverance, of persistence. Even though people around him were trying to hold him back from Jesus, he persisted. He did not give up. And we too need to be persistent in our walk with God. Isn't that right? Amen? And the enemy will mock you, will rebuke you, will talk about you, will put you down, make you feel bad. But don't give up. Be persistent in your desire for God. Bartimaeus' appeal is heard. His persevering faith is rewarded. In verse 49, the Bible says, And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man and saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. With Jerusalem in sight and a great work to be done there, the final week of Messiah's life and mission to save the human race with a multitude of people traveling all around him through this, this busy thoroughfare, Jesus stopped. Jesus what? Jesus stopped. He stood still for this one man. Wow, amen. That's the kind of God we serve. Jesus stood still. He took time out of his busy schedule to be there for his suffering child. Aren't you happy that God has time for you? Amen? That when you call out to him, he hears you. The king of the universe is willing to give heed to your cry. What an amazing God we serve. What a loving God that we serve. And so he calls Bartimaeus. And this is it. Bartimaeus knows by faith that he will never be the same after this encounter with Jesus. He throws off his cloak, he rises up, and he moves towards Jesus. He goes to Jesus. It was probably, you know, he had a cloak on, a, um, kind of like a, a robe. He had that. That was probably the only possession that he had. He threw it aside. Put the world aside. Amen? And he went to Jesus. And Jesus answered him and said, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might have, that I might receive my sight. The moment Bartimaeus has been waiting for is here. Face to face with the Messiah, the one who could heal him and deliver him from his problems. Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you, Bartimaeus? Wow. Can you imagine if you knew who's asking you this question? The king, Jesus, the one who speaks and the world is created, the one who can perform any miracle, who can raise the dead, ask you, what do you want me to do for you? Amen. That's amazing, right? Like, hey, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus, his response was immediate. I want to see. He was very clear on what he wanted. 
And sometimes our prayers to God go all over the place. We want answers for all the problems at once. We want health, deliverance, finance, job, etc. One shot. Lord, give me that one, that one answer that covers it all. But look at Bartimaeus. He just asked for one thing. One thing that was bothering him the most at that time, and it was his sight. I'm sure he had other problems. Pretty sure he was hungry. They didn't have food stamps back then, at least. Yeah, they may have had a different type of program, but he was probably hungry. But he asked to see. And God granted him deliverance. Notice in verse 52. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And this is my favorite word in this in the whole entire passage. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Immediately his eyes were open and he was healed. The blind, he was blind and now he could see. Immediately he was healed and immediately Bartimaeus followed Jesus. He didn't go his own way. He followed Jesus in the way. He dedicated his life to his Savior. Who knows what kind of impact he may have had in the ministry following Jesus. He could have been a part of the 120 in the upper room. We don't know. And I know God has delivered many of you in the past, given you good jobs, good health, healing, and many, many thousands of blessings. But I'm here to remind you that God could deliver you now. Amen? Today, in the present, whatever you're going through. Let me read you this passage from Sons and Daughters. Not only is physical sight restored, but the eyes of his understanding are opened. In Christ, he sees his Redeemer, the Son of Righteousness, shines into his soul. All who feel their need of Christ, as did blind Bartimaeus, and who will be as earnest and determined as he was, will, like him, receive the blessing which they crave. Amen. Bartimaeus' healing was actually one of the last miracles that Jesus performed before he went to the cross. And we're going to do something different here. We're going to make a transition. We're going to go to the beginning of Jesus' ministry, to the book of John in chapter 2. And we're going to take a look at the very first miracle that Jesus did in public, which is, Bible students, what was the first miracle that Jesus did in public? It was turn the water into wine. Praise the Lord, brother. That's right. Amen. That's right. Let's go there. John chapter 2. We're going to close with this story. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John chapter 2. When you get there, let me know by saying amen. John chapter 2. It's the story about when Jesus turned water into wine. And we're going to read verse 9. Verse 9. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that it was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse... But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Jesus performed this miracle at this wedding, a huge party. They ran out of wine, and it wasn't the end of the party. Jesus transforms and converts this water into wine. It's powerful. But there's something in between the lines that I want to, sh I want to point your attention to. Notice in verse 10 at the end of it, thou hast kept the good wine until now. Jesus saved the best till now. This wine was better than the beginning. He saved the best till now. He didn't save the best for last. Sometimes we kind of read through the story and go through it as, oh, he, the, the best for last. He saved the best for last, but the good wine was for now, immediately at that present time. It's interesting. He didn't save the best for last. He saved the best wine for now. And if we're not careful, brothers and sisters, we could end up living our lives thinking that God's blessings are still afar off, somewhere in the future. But God saved the best for when? For now. Amen. It sounds a little motivational, but we need to be motivated. Amen. God saved the best for now. We can have victory now. And the enemy wants to Wants to, he, he works very hard to try to distract us, to think that victory is coming later. But God is not sitting around in his throne room high above the earth in his heavenly sanctuary waiting to show you that he's God someday in the future. He is the God of now. Amen? 
He is the God of now. He is the God of today, the present time. As much he was with you in the past, as much as he will be with you in the future, he is God now. Amen? He's God today. We can't live in the past talking about how great church used to be, how awesome our kids' program used to be, how we used to do VBS. VBS is fun. We need to live in the now. Amen? We need to live in the now because God wants us, he wants to bless us today. Amen? He wants to bless us today. And we all know tomorrow's not guaranteed. Isn't that right? We all know that tomorrow's not guaranteed. And that's how great our God is. That's the kind of God you serve. He's not just the God of yesterday, the God of the future, but he's the God of now. And the Bible tells us in John chapter 10 and verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That's, that's Jesus' desire for us to have a more abundant life. Not that, he, not that we want to put our trust in this world, not that... Not, not some prosperity gospel type of thing. Abundant. To live a life of peace, of contentment, knowing that, that you serve God. Amen? You have this peace in your heart. You, you may not have a lot. You may have a lot. I don't know where, where you're at. But this abundant life is more than stuff. Amen? It's this assurance. It's this, this confidence, knowing that, that God is in control. I'm not sure what you're going through in your life, what kind of challenges you are currently facing. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's dealing with your physical health, spiritual healing. Maybe you need healing in your family or the relationships that you have with some of your other family members or church members. Maybe you're having problems with your child, with your teenager. I got a teenager. It's, it's not easy. But I want to encourage you this morning, church, that God wants to perform miracles in your life today. Amen? Now. Amen? He's not too busy for you. Jesus always has time for you. He wants to deliver you from anything that keeps you from him. But we need to reach out to him. We need to have faith. Enough faith to get Jesus' attention. Without a doubt, you all know that we're living in the last days. Isn't that right? We don't even need to. We just need to turn on the TV and watch the news. And there's just, I mean, I, I, I'm on Facebook. That's my news channel right like a lot of you and there's like earthquake here earthquake there earthquake here earthquake there there's just so many things that are going on all around the world all the signs are are, are telling us something that that Jesus is coming soon isn't that right in the religious the political the economic the social the natural world everywhere we look we could see the birth pains increasing in frequency and intensity and most of all we see the devil attacking God's faithful remnant church causing division and strife in a time when we need to unite and press together towards our mission of preparing the world for the coming king. Jesus is coming soon, brothers and sisters. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11 tells us, and that, knowing the time, that now, God wants to deliver you now, but now also is high time for us to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you, Lord. We want to thank you that you are a God of right now, Lord. You're a God right now, not just in the past, not just in the future, but Lord, you're active and you're aware of everything that we're going through, Lord, in our lives. And you have the solution for us, dear God. We're so thankful that this is the kind of God that we serve and you love us so much. Father, we know we're weak, we're feeble. We can do nothing without you. And Lord, we pray, along with my brothers and sisters, dear God, I pray that you would continue to lead us, continue to guide us, continue to open up doors of opportunities for us to do your will, Lord, to glorify your name, to exalt your name amongst the men and women who we encounter every day of our lives. So we thank you, dear God, and we pray that you would answer whatever prayer requests, whatever struggles that your saints are going through, whatever challenges that they are going through, Father, we pray. We know you can perform a miracle right now. We know that you can deliver us immediately. And we're so thankful for this. And so we thank you. We pray your blessing on us as we continue in the Sabbath. We ask this all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen.